Whoa, holy Christ, mate. Your door, your door. Flashing the lights. Your door, mate. <laughs> One thing I think we can all agree on, that talk TV is always at the cutting edge of uh, political discourse and journalism, and they're always covering the subjects that really, really matter to Britain. <laughs> Some people with penises think they're women. How many women have penises? Nobody's saying whether or not a man's got a penis or a woman's got a penis. Do you know any women with penises? No. You're a doctor. Um, can a woman ha can a woman have a penis? Do you any women with penises whether a woman has a penis and then if he's still got a penis he's a biological man he's not a woman and of course they don't have a penis women don't have penises why why every day every day with the penises every single day no we just we, we automatically know in my neck of the woods <laughs> between the difference between a man and a woman yeah. you know when when i was born the, the, the midwife says to my dad Congratulations, you've got a son. He didn't say congratulations, we don't know what you've got. Wait till it's 18. It's absolute nonsense. Hey, up your twiddle thump. <laughs> Back in my day, women had fannies and men, they had penises. I should know. I've seen my fair share of penises. I've seen hundreds of penises. Oh, shit. <laughs> I need to stop talking about this because I tell you what, when you go out there in the real world, knocking on doors and speaking to people in pubs and town centres in places like Ashfield, nobody's saying whether or not a man's got a penis or a woman's got a penis. You know what, you're absolutely right, Mr Lee Anderson, Tory MP, you're absolutely right. No one's talking about this stuff. So why the f hell are you on live TV talking about it? Women don't have penises. No, biological women don't, but if you're Women don't. You do, then you do, you, Women don't. I'm not going to get anywhere. I know you have to go. Do you genuinely? Do you genuinely think you're going to be elected to government when you can't answer this question? Well, yes, Julia. Actually, because most normal, sensible, intelligent people in this country, when thinking about a political party to vote for, they're not concerned about penises and women. They're more concerned about what policies they have on the NHS, on tax on crime, on policing, all these sort of things, that are how they're going to handle the cost of living. They're the sort of things they look at when deciding which political party to vote for, not penises. You're just going to come straight straight through, aren't you? Of course you are. You're just going to block me off. Women don't have penises. No, biological women don't, but if you're Women don't. Women Now that there is the point, Julia, isn't it? That's the point she's trying to make. Obviously, no. Biological women do not have a penis. But in a nice, decent, polite society, we will refer to trans women as women because it's a nice, decent thing to do. But no, if you want to get to the nitty gritty and get into the, the, the depths of science and everything, of course, no. Bi biological women do not have a penis. I, I hate the fact that I'm even d d trying to defend this position because the whole topic is completely stupid and does, does not warrant any airtime. And I understand why Labour MPs get frustrated on this issue because it's just journalists trying to lead them down a dark alley and they're not going to fall for it. And a lot of them don't want to fall for it because it's bollocks. So as you mentioned earlier, Keir Starmer has before got himself uh, into hot water, quite rightly, for being totally unable to say what a woman is, yes. whether a woman has a penis, yeah. or whether only women have a cervix on yes. a different radio station that has much less intelligent guests yes. and phone-ins than this station. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Other radio stations don't have intelligent guests and intelligent conversations. You do realise you just spent the last 30 minutes talking about penises. You do know that, don't you? Because I didn't sense any air of sarcasm or irony in the statement that you just... <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. It's crazy. Oh, uh, thing is, when you, when you ask yourself, why do talk radio keep going on this subject? of women and penises. It's a rhetorical question in a way, because we all know, and I've just discussed this in other videos, we know why they do it, because it's the only mud they have to throw at Labour. They can't do anything else. Yeah, they can't rave about the great things that the Tory party are doing because they're not doing any great things. They can't rave about how great Brexit's going because Brexit's not going great. So they can't even talk about how 
Labour's policies that they're putting forward are so terrible because, you know, the working man that may be listening to talk radio will probably think, well, actually, that might help me out, what Labour are proposing. So they can't talk about that. So all they have is penises. It's the only thing they have, this stupid women with penises trope, and they will bang onto it till the hells come home. And some people in this country will swallow that shit up and suddenly it becomes topic of the day, number one. <laughs> you know, we've got a cost of living crisis, we've got, we've got war in Ukraine, we've got grain that's not going out to Africa, we've got all these things, but I mean, you have to applaud them in a way. You really do have to applaud the Murdoch press, talk radio, the sun, all of them. You have to applaud them for the way that they've got a lot of people in this country well, no, not a lot of people. It is a marginal group, but they are a marginal group that all vote. <laughs> Definitely all vote. Um, you have to applaud the way that they've got these guys to care about women with penises so much. How is this topic number one? How? <laughs> it's just it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And in a way, this kind of brings me on. I want to talk about the uh, the vote uh, for the leadership, the Tory leadership, because I haven't I haven't done a video since that happened. You guys can cross, right? It's red for me. Cross. Guy in awesome Hawaiian shirt and orange shorts. So he decides to cross it when it's green for me. <laughs> that make no sense at all. <laughs> no sense at all. Anyway, I want to yeah I want to talk about the leadership vote because uh, I haven't done a video since then. This topic kind of links in with it because I think we ended up with the worst scenario we could possibly. Get. I was on the fence. I, I, I was literally watching the, the, the vote and I just did not know how to feel. I was just conflicted, so conflicted. More than anything, I want Boris Johnson to fuck off. You know, I was just thinking, God, imagine a world where he's not prime minister. Wouldn't that just be so amazing? But as I've said in previous videos, Boris Johnson, without doubt, is the best chance of a Labour victory if he's in charge. But the thing is... <laughs> I think we've got the worst scenario now because I think they know what they want to do, the Tories. They're going to keep him so he can absorb all the shit for the next year and they'll replace him maybe six months to a year before the next election. That is the best plan for them because there's more shit coming. There's more Brexit disasters coming. that He, he can swallow up all the fall for all the Brexit shit, all the cost of living stuff, all of the, the fallout from the, the pandemic. He can swallow all that shit up and then they can have a fresh start six months before the election. This is the worst scenario that could have happened. This is what I was most fearful of. Um, you know, because there was uh, there was uh, probably about three, four different scenarios that could have come out of that leadership vote. One, they got rid of him and the new leader, like the problems that I thought, you know, Boris Johnson has to be there for the next election. He's the best chance of a Labour victory, so a new leader would not be good. But then they'd be tarred with the brush of Brexit over the next couple of years because there's more shit to come out. There, there was about three, four different scenarios. I mean, Jeremy Hunt was a scenario that really maybe, you know, it's like a Tory light Brexit with a Jeremy Hunt, isn't it? I think if he'd got the leadership and had, uh, had won that, but I don't want a Tory light. I mean, I know a lot of people say Labour are Tory light, but I, I disagree with that. I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not certain on Keir Starmer. I'm really, you know, a lot of people are not certain on, on what Keir Starmer really stands for, but I think he's got enough left-wing people around him, Angela Rayner and that, to, to put their two cents into the into the policy thing. So I don't believe that Labour are tory light. I think Jeremy Hunt would be a, a tory light, which would probably would be a good thing for Brexit. Maybe he might be for getting us back in the single market and stuff like that, but that, that's not going to happen anyway. Regardless, we've got the worst scenario coming up, which is Boris Johnson for another year, year and a half, and then a fresh leader. You know it's going to happen. What are your thoughts, guys? Do you think that's what's going to happen? We're going to have Boris Johnson for a year and a half, and then six months before an election, they'll get rid of him. He'll be the full guy for everything, and they have a fresh start. And all during that time, talk radio <laughs> will be tarring Labour with the brush of woke. <laughs> Fucking nonsense. <laughs> Till next time, take care.